Faith in Mind by So San Kanji Zenji Daiosho. The perfect way is not difficult. Just avoid getting caught up in preferences. When you are free from aversion and craving, it reveals itself fully and without disguise. A tenth of an inch's difference and heaven and earth are set apart. If you wish to see it before your own eyes, have no fixed thoughts either for or against it. To set up what you like against what you dislike, this is the disease of the mind. When the deep meaning of the way is not understood, peace of mind is disturbed to no purpose. The way is perfect, like vast space, with nothing wanting, nothing superfluous. It is indeed due to picking and choosing that you lose sight of its suchness. Pursue not the outer entanglements Dwell not in the inner void. Be serene in the oneness of things, and dualism vanishes by itself. Transformations going on in an empty world appear real all because of ignorance. Try not to seek after the true. Only cease to cherish opinions. Abide not with dualism. Carefully avoid pursuing it. As soon as you have right and wrong, confusion ensues and mind is lost. The two exist because of the one. But hold not even to this one. When a mind is not disturbed, the 10,000 things offer no offense. In one emptiness, the two are not distinguished, and each contains in itself all the 10,000 things. When no discrimination is made between this and that, how can a one-sided and prejudiced view arise? The great way is calm and large-hearted. For it, nothing is easy, nothing is hard. Small views are irresolute. The more in haste, the tardier they go. Clinging is never kept within bounds. It is sure to go the wrong way. Quit it, and things follow their own courses. Essence neither departs nor abides. Obey the nature of things, and you are in concord with the way. Calm and easy and free from annoyance. But when your thoughts are entangled, they lead away from the truth. They grow heavier and duller and are not at all sound. When they are not sound, the spirit is troubled. What is the use of being partial and one-sided then? When the deep mystery of one suchness is fathomed, 
all of a sudden, we forget external <clears throat> entanglements. When the 10,000 things are viewed in their oneness, we return to the origin and remain where we ever have been. In the mind harmonious with the way, we have the principle of identity, in which we find all strivings quieted. Doubts and resolutions are completely done away with, and the right faith is straightened. There is nothing left behind. There is nothing retained. All is void, lucid, and self-illuminating. There is no exertion, no waste of energy. This is where thinking never attains. This is where the imagination fails to measure. In the higher realm of true suchness, there is neither self nor other. When direct identification is sought, we can only say, not to. One in all, all in one. If only this is realized. No more worry about your not being perfect. taking care of all preferences. <laughs> <laughs> This is my preference. Let me see all your beautiful faces shining. Anybody who can't see me, I can't see you. That's what the truck drivers have, right? Um, whatever. I can't see. If I can't see you in my mirror. Mikara, many others of you who have been here before. I know that many have come from quite far away. 
This is Junpo Roshi's Global Sangha. And to get here, no doubt, you have dealt with all manner of confusions and delays and obstacles and unknowns. Did everyone make it? Oh. Or is somebody still hanging out in an airport? <laughs> present, all present in the comic book. Oh, wonderful. <clears throat> and then you got to Livingston, I don't know, Roscoe, depending on which way you were coming in. You weren't here yet. <laughs> and then the road getting smaller and narrower. And just when you thought, well, it must be there, it said, dead end. <laughs> <laughs> So you see the courage required for this practice. <laughs> Dead end. Go straight on. <laughs> and finally, up our narrow road and arrive. Great wonder, great exhalation, finally. Now we can begin. So I know for many of you it's a reunion of Dharma sisters and brothers who meet this way wherever you may happen to be, always coming together for session. Some of you may be here the first time. And for everyone, there is a certain degree of trepidation, <coughs> uncertainty, how will it be? What if I can't make it through? And this is completely natural. All you have to do is make it through one breath. That's it. And then there may be another. Don't count on it. <laughs> this morning's dawn, the sound of the great bell and all the birds and insects waking up with you. So mysterious, so profound. Just allow you don't try to make anything happen. Just this out breath. And in breath, what is the source of your breath? Where does it come from? What is the origin? So dropping everything away. With this out breath, all the way to the end, every drop of this exhalation, all the way to the very last drop and then what? This 
is really the only way to let go of preferential mind. We can't think our way out of preferences. And then what? In-breath comes, right? And with it, perhaps, various thoughts, right? You might think, hmm, what was the most irritating thing you had to deal with in the last 24 hours? Perhaps it's still lurking about. And what was the irritation based on? What was the agitation coming from? Hmm? Anybody? Not knowing. Hmm? Not knowing. Not knowing? If I could make it or not. This feeling of uncertainty. But that in itself was based on thinking you should know. That's why it was un uncomfortable, right? Mm. Again, this is our preference. We like to have the schedule. We like to have the roadmap. We like to know just exactly how much further we have to go before we get to where we're going and how long it's going to take. Would you please give me that? Oh, this is preferential mind, right? It's really our biggest obstacle. And if you look at it, we just heard this poem. If you really look at what is creating the discomfort, it all comes back to wanting to protect what we think is the self as a separate entity. We think we have to defend it. Of course, preferences all depend on this, right? I want this or that. I prefer this or that. What if we just let that go. This is the deep conditioning we're all dealing with. The notion that we have to defend this separate self. And it's so pervasive we don't even notice it. So session is a time to really see these patterns that develop around this separate identity protection mechanism. So this morning we have this long poem which I excerpted, you'll be happy to know. <laughs> Even so, trying to pick out, you know, my favorite passages, almost the whole thing. Anyway, it's by our third ancestor of Zen. So san kan chi zen ji dai o sho sen san in Chinese. The reason we use Japanese names, so many of us, it's not just because we receive this Zen from our Japanese teachers, but because it's so hard to pronounce Chinese correctly. <laughs> <laughs> And then you have, you know, Pinyin or Wade Giles or, or, and none of it's correct in its pronunciation. So, since how many of you are Chinese here? Anybody? One. So you, you know how weird it sounds, right? When people are trying to pronounce these Chinese names. It's not my mother says about English. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Oh yes, English, very impossible. So, native speaker. 
Anyway, this is um, D.T. Suzuki's translation, which he did probably in the 1950s, so some of the language seems a bit archaic, and I have edited it to some degree. Not much is known about Solosan. We do know that he died in 606 Common Era. And it's said that he was over 40 when he began practicing with Eka, the second ancestor, Wike. And also that he suffered from leprosy. After receiving transmission, in which he was given Bodhidharma's robe, that Bodhidharma had given to Eka, and also the text of the Lankavatara Sutra. He went into the deep mountains and spent the rest of his time in obscurity. And his successor, whose name was Doshin, Daojin, first came to study with him at the age of 14. How many of you were 14 when you first began practicing Zen? Yes? Two, two on that side, anyone on this side? Mm -hmm. He spent nine years with Sosan and received transmission when he was in his early 20s. Solosan passed away while sitting under a tree giving Teisho to his assembly. So, this Sohosan, we know so little about what his early years were like, coming to practice with Eka in his 40s, and suffering from leprosy. Certainly, he did not prefer to have leprosy. None of us prefers to be ill or injured. suffer the depredations of aging, deterioration, the indignities that seem to pile up every time we wake up in the morning. That's a new one. Oh, I used to be able to do such and such. Well, that's over. <laughs> Oh, somebody new is taking up residence in my body. <laughs> Great. Shakyamuni Buddha went out from the castle walls and what did he meet up with? spiritual journey began. Thus our walking this way began.
begin. We are looking into this great matter of life and death, of birthlessness, deathlessness, so on sat down to give a talk to his students. Wonderful, last, everlasting teaching. poem of Soul Songs really is such a wonderful introduction for what we undergo in session. And I don't have to say very much about it, but I'll go through it and perhaps some things will come up. perfect way is not difficult, sometimes translated as the great way is not difficult. Just avoid getting caught up in preferences, <clears throat> or another translation, just avoid choice and attachment, picking and choosing. Note this little word, just. <coughs> it's not difficult. Zazen is not difficult. Session is not difficult. Dying is not difficult. Just what? Don't think that you have any choice in the matter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're all here thinking you chose to come. First great fallacy. <laughs> Our karma brings us together this way. you have to do is be completely present. Taste it. Pain, taste it. Sleepiness, taste it. Irritation, <laughs> wonderful. No problem. think it should be otherwise. That's the only thing that makes things hard, right? Thinking it should be otherwise. Right now, what would you like to have it be? A little nice nap, maybe a different body. <laughs> sure. Why not? One feet soon. Katagiri Roshi once spoke to his students in session, and he said, pain in your knees, sleepiness, feeling really bad, but soon you will die. <laughs> <laughs> Free from 
from aversion and craving. It reveals itself fully and without disguise. It's always revealing. This is always revealing. Not in what you think is the way it should reveal itself, right? Mm -hmm. But right here, right now, as you are now. A tenth of an inch is difference, and heaven and earth are set apart. And this we experience all the time in our zazen, right? Everything is so beautiful. We are in this wondrous world. <laughs> looking out, and there is no gap. And all of a sudden, you think, "Oh, this is really cool." <laughs> <laughs> is difference. To return to this. Fully awake, fully alert to it. If you wish to see it before your own eyes, have no fixed thoughts either for or against it. Don't think I prefer that good sitting to this horrible one. <laughs> To set up what you like against what you dislike, this is the disease of the mind, of course. This is true ignorance, right? To think that we can manipulate things to our own satisfaction causes all kinds of trouble. When the deep meaning of the way is not understood, Peace of mind is disturbed to no purpose. The way is perfect, like vast space, with nothing wanting, nothing superfluous. <laughs> what could we possibly add to this moment? Well, somebody said a nap, right? But truly, truly, what could we possibly add? It is already, never mind it, you are already perfect. Like vast space means nothing cluttering it up. You're just completely as you are. This we just chanted. Sentient beings are primarily all Buddha. This doesn't mean all sentient beings, but you, okay? <laughs> all beings. It is, in due, it is indeed due to picking and choosing that you lose sight of its suchness. Suchness. Pursue not outer entanglements. This means whatever thought forms may be coming your way, just don't pursue them. Whatever you hear, whatever you're thinking, hmm, I wonder why that is happening. I wonder what that is. How come this? How come that? As soon as such thoughts arise, just don't pursue them. That's easily done, right? Everyone knows about entanglements. One thought comes, another thought comes, <laughs> entangled, chained. And who gets chained? So-called you, right? So since no one else is chaining you, guess what? 
As soon as you notice, stop pursuing. Return to the breath. Dwell not in the inner void. Don't think, oh, I have to stay in this. Can't. No place to dwell. Thinking outer, inner, already problem. Be serene in the oneness of things and dualism vanishes by itself. Be serene in this moment. Don't try to make it different from the way it is. Transformations going on in an empty world appear real all because of ignorance. Because we get stuck. We think they have some kind of unchanging inherent reality. Try not to seek after the truth. Only cherish, only cease to cherish opinions. Know that some of you probably know the um, case 19 from the Gateless Barrier, <coughs> in which a young monk, Joshu, asks Nansen, what is the way? Joshu loved this poem by Sosan, and in fact, there are many uh, cases, four cases in the Blue Cliff Record in which he refers to it. So he asked Nansen, what is the way? What did Nansen reply? This very mind. Ordinary mind is the way. said, this very mind. Anyway, ordinary mind is the way. Joshua asked, shall I try to seek after it? So here, Sosan says, try not to seek after it. Right? Nansen answered Joshua, if you try for it, you will become separated from it. When we try to grab hold of what we see as the truth, what happens? It's like trying to grab after a ball, right? You're in the water, there it goes. Joshu persisted. How can I know the way unless I seek after it? Perhaps all of us are here because we feel the only way to know the way is to seek the way. Nonsense, he said. The way is not a matter of knowing or not knowing. Knowing is delusion. Not knowing is confusion. When you have really reached the true way beyond doubt, you will find it as vast and boundless as outer space. How can it be talked about on the level of right and wrong? With these words, Joshu, thank you. And Sosan says, as soon as you have right and wrong, confusion ensues and mind is lost. So probably these words had such resonance throughout the centuries that this exchange between Nansen and Joshu could take place with such impact. Well, I 
better hurry up. What time are we supposed to end? Oh. When you're finished. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before lunch anyway, right? Yes. <laughs> we prefer to have our lunch, right? <laughs> <laughs> Please feel free to stand up and run out at any moment. <laughs> The two exist because of the one, but hold not even to this one. How can this be hell, anyway? Don't get stuck thinking, ah, suchness, ah, the absolute. But a mind is not disturbed. The 10,000 things offer no offense. This is really the true meaning of freedom, isn't it? It's not that we go somewhere away from the 10,000 things. What does the 10,000 things mean? All the things that plague us, right? All the things, that, the forms that we think need to be different from the way they are. They are for no offense. <laughs> emptiness, the two are not distinguished, and each contains in itself all the 10,000 things. This is the fundamental nature of all sentient and insentient. have the same cellular structure. Right now, you have a little itch on your head. That little itch, what is it caused by? Think about all the little bacteria running around in your body. And this seemingly insentient being, wood, no longer growing tree, right? Same cellular structure. Same ground of consciousness. All beings are our relations. Hi, Mom. <laughs> when we feel this, really feel this, it comes about through our practice. We cannot kill. We cannot deceive. We cannot steal. The precepts are just natural, flowing part of our awareness. And he says, when no discrimination is made between this and that, how can a one-sided and prejudiced view arise? We really have so much chance to appreciate that in On This Mountain. Normally, we discriminate between mouse and human being, right? We are here as the temporary guests of the mice. They <laughs> <coughs> are so generous to allow us to enjoy this mountain, just for one example. The great way is calm and large-hearted when there is no prejudiced view, right? We feel this large. 
such heartedness, open heartedness for each other, for all beings. Kindness, compassion flows from this. <coughs> For it, for us, nothing is easy, nothing is hard. Small views, in other words, when we somehow get ourselves entangled, are irresolute, cannot feel resolution. More in haste, the tardier they go. I'm sure everyone has had that experience. Oh, I have to be in the zendo, and I'm not ready. Oh, <coughs> rush, rush, rush. And suddenly you get tripped up on something, right? And you get even more delayed. Maybe it doesn't happen to you, it happens to me all the time. Rush, rush, rush. Oh my God, where's my rope? Oh. Clinging is never kept within bounds. What a wonderful thing to write on your forehead. <laughs> you think you can cling just a little bit, but no, that little bit, what happens to it? Like huge, like a snowball, more and more and more and more. Be sure to go the wrong way. Quit it. Just quit it. <laughs> well, that's what we're doing here, right? Over and over, we may have to say, come on, quit it. Sometimes it might help you in your zazen. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> It just goes on and on. You have to, you know, a little exertion can help, right? <laughs> this is a sword, Manjushi, sword, great compassion. You need this. <clears throat> Interrupt it. This is Kesaka. Maybe you don't use Kesaku. You can do that for yourself, right? Quit it, and things follow their own courses. This true nature is always revealing, manifesting right here, right now. Essence neither departs nor abides, just manifesting. <clears throat> Obey the nature of things and you are in concord with the way, just flowing, just breath, calm and easy and free from annoyance. But when your thoughts are entangled, they lead away from the truth. They grow heavier and duller and are not at all sound. When they are not sound, the spirit is troubled. What is the use of being partial and one-sided then? So once again, struggling, feeling entangled, just quit it, just stop. For many of us, it's very intellectual, right? We say, okay, I'm going to quit it. I'm just going to stop. <clears throat> and it doesn't stop. But you know what you can do? Master Hakuin told us this very wonderful secret when he spoke about the different ways of breathing, following the breath, counting the breath. He also spoke about stopping.
deep mystery of one suchness is fathomed. This one suchness is stopping. When you stop, what happens? You hear everything. There is no separate self. Now you can take Master Hakuin literally. I do recommend it. I do recommend when you're having a struggle of this view and that, taking over and tangling thoughts seem to be interminable. You cannot seem to quit it because you're so caught up in your intellect. I do recommend using the breath, exhaling to the very end and not breathing in. Literally and not literally, okay? Because I don't want you to fall over dead. But before you fall over dead, you will experience that stopping. You will experience the breath as it comes, not gasping for breath, but as it comes so naturally. Just this deep mystery of one suchness. <coughs> All of a sudden, we forget external entanglements, letting it all go on that out-breath. Where the 10,000 things are viewed in their oneness, we return to the origin. Remember I asked you, where is the origin of your breath? Original face. In the mind, harmonious with the way we have the principle of identity. <coughs> the absolute and the relative are one. In which we find all strivings quieted. to seek after. Doubts and resolutions are completely done away with, and the right faith is straightened. You can find your right faith straightened just by straightening your spine. Even now you are relaxed a little bit. Okay, great. Put your knees up harder to straighten your spine that way, right? So just for a moment, be uncomfortable. I promise you can change again. Just for this moment, feel what it's like to have your right faith strength. This right is not opposed to wrong, okay? Might say. True faith. It's not a matter of believing this or that. True trust. What are you trusting in? It's vast. Bound. As I put it, Buji, nothing to do. It already is. You already are. To trust in this. There is nothing left behind. Nothing retained. All is void, lucid, and self-illuminating. There 
there is no exertion, no waste of energy. In the Heart Sutra, we chant, no hindrance in the mind, no hindrance, therefore no fear. is where thinking never attains. We can't think our way there. This is where the imagination fails to measure. We can't possibly come up with it. It already is. In the higher realm of true suchness, there is neither self nor other. When direct identification is sought, is experienced, we can only say, not to. This is Zazen. And then, getting up and taking care of business doing what needs to be done with the same one mind, not to this, this, this. 